Hi there! I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about magnetic traits that will keep you together. Mm. Before we begin, I do want to let you all know that we are available for coaching sessions. These are private one-on-one -on -one conversations that we can go over your situation if you would like. Just want to let you know that we are both available for that. You can see our links in the bio. That's right. We're happy to talk with you because breakups are so confusing. Mm -hmm. You know, many people get obsessed on no contact after a breakup and they don't really work on other important aspects. But you have to remember the relationship didn't last for a reason. Now, you have to really look inward on yourself and who you were in the relationship who your partner was and try and be as objective as possible, which isn't easy mm -hmm. to do. But what you also want to do in no contact is better yourself and understand how to have a healthy relationship with that person again. And there are certain behaviors, certain things that you can do that will keep the attraction stronger, magnetic traits, mm -hmm. keep the connection stronger. When you do unhealthy or toxic things, it lessens the intensity like two magnets mm -hmm. and it just weakens the charge of the connection. It takes those things to keep a relationship going. And you want to think about, are there certain characteristics that people have that keep people in stronger, healthy, long-term relationships? I'm sure there's plenty of research out there that says yes, okay? <laughs> and knowing what those traits are can really help you have a clear direction on what you're aiming for when this person comes back. If you're not ready for them when they come back, you're going to regret it. Exactly. Okay. And in this video, we're going to look at one specific piece of research. I'm going to try not to butcher their name, so please bear with me. <laughs> but it's by researchers Apostolou and Chris. Tofuru. <laughs> okay. So this is coming out of the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. We get through a bunch of different research from all around the world and we are so thankful for researchers who look into these types of topics and see you know, what their data says. Absolutely. It gives us a lot more to work with. It gives us more knowledge and areas of, of focus for us. Yeah. So in this piece of research, they found certain traits. I think there was a total of 11 traits mm -hmm. that were found in long-term stable relationships. We're going to share a couple with you today so that you guys know what direction to go in. And also you can reflect for yourselves, what areas am I a little bit weaker in? Maybe these traits I noticed that I don't really have. Maybe these are some areas that I can focus on more for myself. That's a great point. So as we're going through these, think about how did I do with this trait? How did my partner do with this trait? And also, what will I do to strengthen myself in this area while I'm not talking with them. Mm -hmm. How can you repair it and get stronger or better at it? Exactly. Right. What's the first one? The very first one is trustworthiness and faithfulness. Is that important? Eh, just slightly. <laughs> Not too much, but... <laughs> That's at the bottom of the list, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's pretty important. It is pretty important yeah. for those of you who can't take a joke. <laughs> it's very important in a relationship. And we talk about this all of the time, how safety is one of those fundamental elements to a healthy relationship. You want to be able to trust your partner, to know that you can be yourself around them, to be able to rely on them. Mm -hmm. That really is what makes a connection strong, is having that bond to know that you can depend on someone. Oh, yeah. It's so huge. Mm -hmm. So it does give you that sense of security, knowing that your partner does follow through with their word, that you know that they are going to be there at a certain date and time when they say that they're going to be there, that you know that they're not hiding things from you or lying to you, that you can really work together as a team. It is really, really difficult to win anything in any sort of game when you have teammates that are having their own agendas and not sharing information and not collaborating. So trust, safety, and transparency are so, so, so important. Absolutely. Yes, it is definitely towards the top mm -hmm. because when you don't have those things, it's like you, never, you don't feel safe anymore. Mm -hmm. You feel like they could leave you at any time. It's going to set off all kinds of abandonment issues and it's just... 
Yes, not good. Right. Okay. So always make sure you're working on trust. Exactly. And when you think about this being a trait, you know, you think about different personalities. There are some personalities that are a little bit more secretive, that are a little bit more reclusive, that don't share as much really important information. Then there are personalities that are clear as what's that wrap called? Plastic wrap? <laughs> saran wrap? <laughs> yeah, saran wrap. <laughs> cellophane. That's yeah. the word that I was thinking of. There's some people that are clear as cellophane, that they just TMI everything, you know? Today, I got a hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> <laughs> and so this is a trait that can be worked on, and it also does take vulnerability to be able to have that level of trustworthiness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, the next one. This is a big one. The ability to have fun and playfulness. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely huge for me as a stand-up comedian, you know. <laughs> one of the, you know, I talk about the Appleby girl all the time. That was probably the most attractive thing about her to me was her ability to banter was just incredible. I've known many, many stand-up comedians over the years. And so you've known many of them too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Victoria has gone to many of the comedy shows this over is the years. True. And and you know that mm -hmm. it, finding somebody really funny is really great when you find somebody that can laugh and play with. And you know they say kids learn through play. Mm -hmm. We learn through play. We we. We think we have to be serious as adults yeah, all the that's time, true. right? So many, especially me, right? <laughs> yeah, you're a very serious person. <laughs> a lot, but a lot of people think they have to be serious all true. the time. Mm -hmm. How many adult friends that you have? They just they can't laugh and be silly and let their guard down. They they take themselves so seriously all the time. When you feel that connection with somebody that you can laugh and play and be yourself, it it takes it to another level. As mm -hmm. I know for me, that's an incredible trait um, and when you feel like you can play you can say things that might be a little bit edgy mm -hmm. a little bit silly mm -hmm. and know that the person won't get offended they won't get angry at you or they'll 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 give you some a hard time back you know what I mean <laughs> all right so Craig will make fun of you <laughs> it's true I will <laughs> But in a playful way. This is true. Right? But you know, that playfulness does create also that sense of safety too. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, when you really feel safe with someone, then you do feel like you can be more creative. You can be more of yourself and smile more, laugh more. And these things are really important as far as creating joy in a relationship and really boosting that relationship satisfaction. Yeah. And it's also great to be able to make fun of yourself too. Yeah, this is true. Right? You know, mm -hmm. when you can do that then the play it, it gets even better because you can make fun of yourself they can make fun of you mm -hmm. you know you don't take things so personally you know it just depends upon the connection that you have with true, that person true. we saw somebody got really offended about yeah, that yeah. a few months ago you remember that yeah, one so uh so it just depends upon the person and the connection you have with them mm -hmm. you know because sometimes people can be really like there's like a really angryness mm -hmm. to their their comments, you right, know. Right, right. So be mindful. But yeah. humor can be really therapeutic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the next one. Having a good relationship with friends and family. Now, not everybody came from a good home. This is true. Right? Like poor Victoria here. What? <laughs> we found her in the gutter. <laughs> All right, that crossed the line. <laughs> See what I could say about play? <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> But when you, you know, not everybody has had a good family, this right? True, like, yeah. and I, so many of our clients talk about trauma growing up, mm -hmm. abuse, neglect. And so don't always assume that it's going to be a great relationship with their family. So you want to look at the parents too and see if they're relatively healthy. But it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. Also friends, because you choose your friends, right. right? You can't choose your family, but you could choose your friends. So if they have a good support network, and friends that they can count on and trust and that care about them, that's showing that they can have stable relationships, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And if you're keeping track of all of these traits so far, there is a level of security in each one. You know, having a good social support network, being able to have fun, enjoy life. You know, all of these traits do lead to a more secure attachment style. Mm -hmm. I think that really is the core of, of this research. All right, the next 
big trait is having a positive mindset. And so this is really, really important because we do bring out into our relationships a part of ourselves. A relationship is a reflection of our inner way of relating with ourselves too. So if we do have issues with negativity, if we do always focus on the negative, kind of have this downward spiral, then our relationship can show that too. And it can bring down our partner. It, there, it brings a heaviness to the relationship that wouldn't be there otherwise. Mm -hmm. So thinking about, do we have a hopeful attitude about the future? Now, it's natural and normal for some people to feel more depressed or more stressed at certain times in their life, but I think the general point here is resiliency, the ability to be able to bounce back, the ability to, even if times are challenging and times are hard, to still have hope and have a positive mindset. Absolutely. Negativity, it, it really wears people down mm -hmm. and they just, they don't want to be around. They, they want to stay away from you when you're negative all the time. Mm -hmm. So you always got to be mindful of that. And particularly if you're tired, had a long day at work, are you negative? Are you complaining? Are you grumpy? You know, mm -hmm. if you are, you know, go take care of yourself. Go do something to relax for a little bit. And, and you know, don't spend so much time with the other person mm -hmm. where it's going to wear down that connection. Exactly. And this is really the part where your own mental health has a huge impact on the relationship itself. So these are personal traits. Is your mental health in a good place? And this is really where mental health has a huge part to play in your relationship. You know, mental health being part of your own responsibility for yourself and making sure that you are in a stable place. Absolutely. All right, our next big trait is being able to negotiate and compromise. Mm -hmm. This is really huge and has to do a lot with communication skills. Are you able to ask for what you need? Are you able to take a no from a partner? Are you able to work with a partner and find out what works for you and what works for them without it turning into this giant conflict that you know gets blown out of proportion and name calling and you know spirals into this thing that it really wasn't in the beginning? Mm, yes, that taking a no is a tough one. Mm -hmm. When somebody doesn't want to do something, uh, that could be intimacy, mm -hmm. going certain places with you. But on the flip side of that is, are you, are you always saying no to your mm -hmm. partner wanting to do these things? You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to be able to do those things too. Exactly. You have to think about your own needs and wants. You have to think about your partner's needs and wants. In life, there's going to be moments where you do have to prioritize your partner. And in moments, there's going to be times where you need to prioritize other things too. If you have children, a lot of times you have to prioritize the children. Yep. You know, if you have a, a really high demanding job and you need that income to survive, there's gonna be times where you need to prioritize work. Mm -hmm. So it's all about finding that balance and communicating that with your partner. And you know, it's, it's better to over communicate than it is to under communicate. Mm -hmm. Of course, we never want you to overwhelm each other, but as far as it goes back to transparency, as far as making things clear with your partner, it's important to to let them know what you can provide in a certain moment and what you want. Yeah. Navigating these things is not easy, mm -hmm. but when you're mindful of them and you're at least considering these things and you're reflecting on yourself and how you're showing up for your partner or they're showing up for you and you're constantly saying, well, they're not, you know, compromising mm -hmm. with me or they're not, you know, being fair with me, uh, you know, you can, at least address it and be mindful of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's better than it, these things happening and you're not dealing with it or addressing it or even thinking about it. Exactly, and the point here is about being flexible. You know, being able to have some leeway, being able to make decisions together as a couple, as a team. Yeah, all of these things are important to think about. And you can use this video as a reflective tool to think about yourself, how you were, how you'd like to be, how your partner was, how you'd like them to be, and how to navigate it in a way that works for both people. Because a relationship is about two people's needs, and the more that you're entering in a healthy way that's considerate 
of the other person, the more likely both people are going to be happy in the long term and have that strong connection even after many years. Mm -hmm. Very well said. All right. So hopefully this one's been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.